Good evening and welcome to Freedom is a Constant Struggle with your host and producer, Ki Lunyasha, and board opping is Jackie Perez. My guest is Fabia Kuji Chagalia, <laughs> and she'll be coming up shortly. But first, I want to share with you a commentary by Mumia Abu Jamal, who is still in a Pennsylvania prison where he does not belong uh, after 34 years. Uh, so let's take a listen. The Trump Triumph. Several months ago, I mentioned that the Republican Party has been morphed into the Trump Party. That transformation is now complete. Forces that stood against him have been silenced, shouted down, intimidated, or purged. When his last challenger, Texas Senator Ted Cruz, dared to suggest Republican voters should vote their conscience, yells of endorse Trump were followed by a chorus of boos when he failed to do so. He and his wife were threatened by Trump conventioneers. Republicans were rushed to the exits by angry Trumpists. The Republican National Convention was not a presidential event, but a celebration of ego, anger, and gross wealth. It is the party of Trump. The very fact that he has done so is nothing short of remarkable. Trump is, to be honest, a fair-weather Republican. His victory over the party is the political equivalent to a hostile takeover in business. You buy a majority of shares, control the board of directors, and fire those you don't want or don't need. You loot the company and leave it a bankrupt shell. The Republican Party has become a shell of its former self. It is hollow, an echo chamber of seething hatreds, mass ego, revenge fantasies, and white nationalism. It is the party of Goldwater, the party of Nixon, the party of Agnew, the party of thin-lipped anger at the change that has swept the nation since the 1960s. The convention, if it showed anything, was the thin veneer of hatred and unity in contempt against Hillary Clinton. It is united against anyone perceived as the other. It is united in fear and dread. It is against everything. It is for nothing but Donald J. Trump. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. And, of course, Mumia Abu Jamal uh, is suffering right now uh, from hepatitis C, and he's not getting the treatment he needs, even though his lawyers are fighting uh, for him. Uh, so I hope that everyone who needs to be tested is getting tested for, for um, uh, hepatitis C, and um, because it's, it's rampant in the prison system, and uh, uh, it... it um, isn't revealed, uh, isn't manifested right away, so it's very important to get tested. Uh, among those who braved our struggle and remain imprisoned at least 30 years are Oscar Lopez Rivera, Leonard Peltier, Jan Lehman, Tom Manning, and David Gilbert, and the following captive warriors have been incarcerated for three to five decades. In fact, one of our longest-held jailhouse lawyers is Rochelle Sinkyu McGee, imprisoned in California since 1963, for 63 years. He did eight years in Angola prior to 1963, between ages of 16 and 24. So he spent practically his whole life in prison, and he's never been guilty of even assault. Our stalwart freedom fighter, Sundiata Okoli, Clark Squire, is doing his 43rd year in prison, despite being 79 years old with a clean record, for which the recidivism rate is practically zero. Mm. 
Others include Romaine, Chip Fitzgerald, Herman Bell, Jaleel Muntakim, Ed Poindexter, Russell M Maroon Schultz, who just won a lawsuit uh, for being kept in the hole 22 years, Veronza Bowers, Mutulu Shakur, Tupac's uncle, Robert, stepfather rather, Robert Seth Hayes, Kamal Siddiqui, Kojo Bomani, Sabab, Sababu, Maliki, Shakur, Latin. We cannot forget the Move Nine, mm. Africa Sisters and Brothers, two of whom died mysteriously in prison, confined since 1978. Prolonged solitary confinement is torture, and most of our political prisoners have endured years, even decades, in such lockups. Witness Ugo Pinel, also known as Yogi Bear, who was murdered last August in what I believe was a, we believe was a setup. After 30 years of struggle, we got Mumia Abu Jamal off death row, only to see him dying in general population from untreated hep hepatitis C, a curable disease. Other OGs who joined the ancestors while still incarcerated or within days of their release include Marilyn Buck, Albert Noah Washington, Wapashite Mondo Weilanga, David Rice, Abdullah Majid, Herman Wallace, Merle and Phil Africa, Kuasi Balagoon, Angel Rod or Angel Rodriguez, Cristobal, Bashir Hamid, Teddy Jah Heath, George Lester Jackson, Sam Melville, Warren Wells, and the list goes probably Ger on. Geronimo. Well, Geronimo died out, so I didn't really see that. So he got out. Right. But he did pass on and join the ancestors. Mm -hmm. um, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce our lovely guest, uh, mm -hmm. warrior, scholar, mm -hmm dear friend, yes. cultural artist, <laughs> columnist, and author, Favia Kuji Chagulia, which means self-determination, is a Renaissance woman <laughs> who has performed and lectured extensively throughout the continental USA, the Caribbean, and England. A student of Dr. John Henrik Clark, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakunan, and Dr. Oh, I lost my place. Chancellor Williams, Sister Kuji Jagalia is a Dijali Ba or Griot, mm -hmm. reveals, who reveals history and heals society. She is the author of Recognizing and Resolving the Roots of Racism, Elephant in the Room, an anthology of articles, essays, and poetry uh, by Phoenix Fire. Uh, Co -author authors are Lige Daly and Robert Woods. Her latest CD is titled The Human Race. <laughs> Kuji Chagogalia currently writes for the San Francisco Examiner online newspaper. And for more information, you can go to my website, definitely. Tell, tell our viewers. For some reason, I don't have it on here. It's uh, com. That's uh, www.kujichagulia. P-H-A-V-I-A dot com. There we go. And thank you so oh, much. Um, welcome to thank Freedom. You. It's so good to have you back. It's always such an honor and pleasure being in the midst of such wisdom oh. and creativity. <laughs> I'm always honored. And, you know, today is, uh, as every day in a racist country, there's so much things going on in the world and in the planet. And I saw an in, in, um, interview of someone giving out misinformation yet again. And the interviewer asked the person, a black man, do you think race had anything to do with the shootings? And what, he gave the wrong shootings? answer. It didn't matter. She said the shootings, because they're all the same. And the answer was always wrong. He said, yes, that's a lie. Race had nothing to do with the shootings. Race doesn't have anything to do with any shootings. Racism, however, has everything to do with the shootings. White supremacy has everything to do with it, 
not race, not skin color, not DNA. So America keeps us confused. It makes sure that we never look at the problem so that the problem can continue. The way cigarette, uh, tobacco companies never acknowledge the problems with cigarettes, they just said, oh, go ahead and smoke it, you'll be all right. So, you know, we're being told, let's just go pray, everything will be fine, don't worry about it. But thousands and thousands of people are being killed. As I was getting ready to come over here, the police shot a black man this morning who was laying on the ground with his hands in the air, explaining that he was a physical therapist. You could see he was no threat. The policeman still shot him, then handcuffed him. And the black guy who survived, thank goodness, he said, why did you shoot me? And the cop said, I don't know. Well, he's lying too. He shot him because of racism and white supremacy. There you go. <laughs> it is the it is the culprit. It is the problem. People are saying that it's you know it's the culture. It's the culture, and the irony is everyone is trained and programmed to be racist in this culture. We're all programmed yeah. to love white, hate black. That's all white supremacy is. It means white is better. White, white is, is always right, right. Black is wrong. That's what it always means. Go. White is better and white is, is, is always correct. So what we have to do as a people is acknowledge that there is only one race, and that's the human race. Thank you. And it's the human race, H-U-E, hue, because everybody has color. No one's translucent. I'm so glad to hear you say that. Pl come on. Have you ever seen a translucent person? We all have color. Of we are course. all people of color. That's why we're called humans. The irony is white supremacy teaches us to believe that one per that one group is a master of the human race and know. everybody else is simply a member of the human race. Uh, so until we come to the realization that we are one race, the human race, and that we are all responsible for each other, if we don't learn to protect and respect each other, we won't have to worry about climate change. We'll kill each other. <laughs> so well, it, today it's 127 degrees in Iraq. Climate change. And I don't think they have a lot of air conditioning. Of course not. And, you know, blame, it would be like blaming race as opposed to racism would be like blaming water for, for climate change. <laughs> Water's not the problem. Polluting the water is the problem. Race is not the problem. It's disrespecting people based on this made-up concept of race. And sun is not the problem. Sun is not the problem. It's the, what do you call it? The, the, the ozone. It's what people are doing thing. that yeah. is the problem. So I really was, you know, I'd like to just kind of look at that because we don't really know how we got here. Every one of us has been touched by white supremacy and racism. If you're born in this country, you are programmed. And we have to sure. figure out how to delete that program. From the minute you... You Come have to womb, fight it if from the womb to the tomb, definitely. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to go through this whole idea. What we really needed in uh, this country and in our minds is a paradigm shift. We have got to think outside the box of white supremacy. Very good movie called The Box. I don't, I'm not sure the actors or the director, it doesn't matter. It's about the fact that someone's given an opportunity to win a million dollars if they just press the button on the box. A million dollars. However, if you press the button, somewhere somewhere on earth dies. So now I'm thinking, of course, well, is it somebody who deserves to die, like a Hitler type? And the person says, it doesn't matter. You won't know them, but just know that if you press the button, you get a million, but someone must die. Mm. In my mind, I eventually know I can't press that button because I cannot kill another human being. I'm a human being, I respect all human beings. And the whole movie is around that premise. The reality is white supremacy and racism do not allow us to respect all human beings. So we don't mind killing anyone. The other. The other. The xenophobia of the other. Mm -hmm. And there's no such thing as the other. Mm -hmm. We are all the human beings. There's only one race. And that's, so, if my, I may inject, that's why you have so, so many police shootings all over the country. Of course. Because they have otherized. That's right. Us. They have been trained to see us as the other. Now, the irony is, is that we are all, we've all been taught this. This concept of white supremacy, and it's very simple. People even hate to say that out loud. Remember growing up, nobody said the word cancer. It was called the big C. 
You couldn't even say the word cancer. You couldn't even say the word pregnant. It was called with child. And here we are today. We're afraid to say white supremacy, which simply means white is better, white is right. That's all it means. And we are programmed like that from the moment that we are born. So what happens is that when you're born, we have this language. And we are all given the language of white supremacy and racism. So we are taught that black cats aren't a prob are the problem, not white cats. Heaven's white, angels white, God is white, Jesus is white, Superman's white, Batman's white, Sn who, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest, fairest of them all? The well, who's the fairest of them all? Snow, Snow white is the fairest of them all. <laughs> the ugly duckling, in the ugly duckling, <laughs> the, as long as that duckling is black, it's called ugly. But the minute that duckling turns into a white swan, now it is beautiful. beautiful. Beauty and the beast. As long as that beast is brown, it's a beast. But for beauty to be able to marry the beast, the beast can no longer be brown. The beast must turn white. Now it's all right. So, you know, we, we know that the, the, the only time a lie is good is just a little white lie. The only crime that's good is white collar crime. <laughs> so we are programmed from the moment yeah, we are those born. Those are the crimes that you don't go to jail for. That's right. <laughs> we're programmed from the minute yeah, we're born yeah. to love white. You can steal 80,000, 80 and, million. And it's okay. And, and it's fine. It's okay. <laughs> so if we are programmed to love white, you have to also be programmed to hate black. Tell so me. what do we no, do? That's right. We have a whole language that programs us to hate black. You have black sheep of the family. I always tell people I'm the white sheep of the family. <laughs> <laughs> I've been white, ma white male, white ball, white listed. And then people say, what do you mean? See, it doesn't feel good, does it? So when we hear these words all the time, black market, black list, black ball, why is that? It's simply a process of classical conditioning where we are trained to hate black. If you look in the dictionary right now, and the definition for black is evil, wicked, guilty, wow, ugly. Why is that in the dictionary? You go to the same dictionary, look up the word white, innocent, pure. Wow. So before you even step in school, we have a whole language that has programmed us to hate black, love white. Mm -hmm. It is a program that we have all been um, unjustly dealt. And we must fight it every single day with all of our strength to realize we are all one human race. If we don't get past this, we are going to die as one species. So the irony... And there are no subspecies. There are no subspecies. And bees and uh, I think what was the other one? Bees have subspecies and chimpanzees. And other than so that, we are one that, species. It. We are the human race. Yeah. So white, 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 oh, excuse me, white supremacy racism has trained us not to see ourselves as one as one people, because why? It benefits capitalism and imperialism. Yeah. We had, that had, had to, to have- Individual, competitive. Yeah, individualistic, mm -hmm. violent, all of that. So what has happened is we have a whole society that has been um, destroying, killing, harming the other, those who are not considered quote unquote white. And since we don't know our history or anyone else's history, we just I fall know. for anything because we don't have any background information. And ironically, it's no accident that in the school system, history's been eliminated. They don't teach history anymore in the school system. Oh, no, you're not. Not at all. Are you kidding it's me? It's been geography eliminated. Because if Are you, you know history me? and geography, you can put the pieces together. Now it's all under the title of humanities. Children don't can't read a map. I had children who could not find San Francisco on well, You know what I'm flashing on? I took my son out of school in the sixth grade because of what they were teaching him and uh, started homeschooling him. Mm -hmm. And when you said that, I, I flashed back on when I bought a globe and there was a geography game that we used to play with the globe. Yes. Okay, so yes. my son learned geography at home. <laughs> right. So, folks, you can teach your kids geography. Get a globe if you can afford one or try to find one used if you can. 
and uh, you know maybe make some sacrifice for a globe so that you can teach your kids geography and there are geography games you can play definitely with and you, you can know? teach history your mm -hmm. child you can, history yeah. at home and if you do get an atlas or a map get one that is not steeped in white supremacy racism don't get the Mercator map from the 16th century get the Peter's projection map from the 20th century, because the Peter's projection map has the correct sizes on the map. Right, because Africa contains about three U.S.s, doesn't uh, it? Right. You can put the United States in Africa about at least three times. Mm -hmm. In the Mercator map, the United States is larger than Africa. So on the Mercator map, all the places that are indigenous to Caucasians are huge. And all the places that are indigenous to people who are not Caucasian are very small. But when you look at the Peter's projection map, it's obvious that you can see that Caucasians are only 10%, 10% of the global population. Of course. And right here in the U.S., uh, in a Counterpunch punch article I just read, the author uh, uh, assesses the, the uh, white population now in the U.S. at about 30%. Mm, interesting. Mm. Interesting. And, you know, people say things like, oh, we have an immigration problem. We don't have an immigration problem. We have a racism problem. That's racism Nobody's problem. concerned about Canadians. Nobody's that's, concerned about illegal British people in the States. It's a racism problem. Yeah, and the racists are really uh, unhappy with the fact that they know their numbers are dwindling. Yes. And that they, are the, they really are the true minority. True. And they, they, they're loath. You will never hear them call themselves a minority. Not because that's the language that is given to because us. Because it means less than. Less inferior than. Inferior in importance. Third world. Mm -hmm. We have been giving all this language so that we have no mm -hmm. respect for anyone who is not Caucasian. And I have to say... I refuse to be called a minority. Thank you. I'm a Melanite. I'm a, uh, I refuse to use the word, but I'm a Melanite because Melanites are people who range from the blackest to midnight to the whitest to white Melanites. Oh, I didn't know that. I love it. <laughs> I thought you were being a little little discriminatory there. Oh, you know, but, but we have to really be careful because we've all been taught these horrible lies. Mm -hmm. And we all have to analyze how much of this is in Britain, how much of this we can eliminate. Exactly. We have, con we have constantly got to delete this program. So we've all been taught that, you know, good guys wear white. Every time children watch cartoons, they're programmed. Good guys are in white bad guys are in black. We're always programmed to hate black and love white. So that by age three, that's ingrained in us. So it's no accident that if you become a policeman at age 33 and you see somebody black, bam, I have to shoot you. Because people believe or see, that people actually see what they believe. We don't believe what we see. We are humans. We see what we believe. If you believe all black people are criminals, when you see a black person, you see a criminal. That's right. If you believe, that's why they clutch their purses. Yes, and... I get on an elevator and everybody's all scared because I stepped on the elevator because they've been programmed to see all blacks as thieves. So you don't see me. Right. You see your belief system, mm -hmm. and your belief system is white supremacy. So the hundreds and thousands of blacks that have been killed and shot are all symptomatic of this program of white supremacy. Exactly. Even the the brother that they shot today, Charles Kinsey. After he was on the ground, no threat whatsoever. The police officer shot him. Thank goodness he survived. And he asked the, the officer, why did you shoot me? And the officer said, I don't know. He doesn't even realize how much he's programmed at white supremacy. We have all got to start acknowledging the program and delete it because exactly. it's everywhere. So we've got hundreds and thousands of people who have constantly been killed. But the irony is this is nothing new. This has been going on since. Yeah, did you want Jackie to do the thingy? As, as a matter of fact, these, this is just a, a short list. And even before I could finish the list, more people have been shot. This is just a short list of the people who have been wow. shot just in the past three years. Wow. Just in the past yeah. three years. This is the list of people who have been shot. So. And it, I'm, I'm sure it's not complete because we oh, can't no. know everyone who's been shot. But those no. are the ones who made the news. Those were just the ones who made the news. Exactly. And it goes back to 100 years of lynching. So and uh, one of the, one of the uh, person, may I inject this? Please. One of the persons that you have on the list that I've managed to be able to see, <laughs> over the course of 14 years, yes. Minnesota police initiated at least 52 encounters, a staggering number 
against Phil Philando Castile, who's on that list and was killed, citing him for minor offenses like driving without wearing a seatbelt. Okay? Driving without a muffler. Okay, these encounters resulted in Philando being assessed a total of $6,588 in fines and fees. And this is the guy, if I'm not mistaken, who was standing, who, who, who was making, surviving and supporting his kids mm. uh, by selling uh, CDs in front of this uh, Arabone grocery store. Right. And, the, and the brother was so cool. You know, he's, he's suing. And Wonderful. bless his heart. But um, 52 encounters. So what they're doing is that basically um, the police are charged with raising the funds for the cities. Right. And Ferguson and Minnesota and, you know, other cities are, are making all kinds of money off of these traffic stops and fines. And bogus stops. Bogus, bogus stops fines. and stuff. And, That's and, right. and then when they, pay, when they can't pay them, a warrant goes out for the arrest. Next thing you know, they're in jail. Next thing you know, they can't pay anybody That's because right. they lost their job. That's right. It's a vicious circle. It's a vicious cycle. It's and nasty. Then they get caught up in the criminal injustice system Thank you. that we have. And, yes. and I'm very clear on language because language is what perpetuates this insanity. We have to constantly remember that children are listening to us. And if you say the justice system... Of course, they grew up thinking everything's fine. It's an injustice system. Yes, it is. I refuse is. to use those words. Court system, legal that. system, injustice system. But we have got to start watching our words and stop the program. And again, none of this is, is grown in a vacuum. This has been going on to African Americans since... sixteen. Since something. the 1600s. And the, some of the worst terrorist attacks that have gone on in this country have been perpetuated against African Americans. And Native Americans. And Native Americans, definitely. And, and I want to be clear, over 300 million indigenous people, you can't be an indigenous American because America wasn't here. You're an indigenous person. 300 million indigenous nations, not tribes. That's another word we've been given to minimize our genius. 300 million indigenous peoples were killed so that this country could be started. 100 million Africans were enslaved and killed so that this country could be started. And I had just had a list of some of the uh, terrorist attacks that have been perpetuated on us. And this since the 1917 East St. Louis massacre to the 1919 massacre in, in uh, Arkansas. You can Google all this. You can YouTube it. Please look it up. The Tulsa uh, massacre with Black Wall Street, destroying Black Wall Street, 1923, the Rosewood, Mass the, uh, Rosewood Massacre, 1961, the Birmingham church bombing, four little Girl. girls oh, were cool. bombed, killed because of white supremacy racism, not because they were black. That's a misnomer. These things happen because of white supremacy, racism. Being black is not the problem. White supremacy, racism is a problem. We have to get clear on that, Thank number you. one. Uh, the Selma Bridge, uh, the ambush and attack of the marches on the Selma Bridge with Dr. King in 1965. The bombing of the MOVE organization in Philadelphia. Well, wasn't that horrible? Uh, you got to stop there for a minute. Bombed an entire city block. How dare black people houses, have self-determination? 60 privately owned, solid row houses. houses. Row houses owned by black people. By black folks. The fire department and the chief of police, all of them, stood there and let it burn. And when the children and people tried to run out, the police shot at them so that they couldn't leave the building. And Ramona Africa and a child nicknamed Birdie were the only survivors. survivors. And she was burned, and, and, and they incarcerated her. And because she would not renounce the move, move, she had to do seven years. years. And she did every one of them because she was not going to renounce the move. And her sisters and brothers, uh, the move known as the Move Nine, right. all with the surname Africa, are still in prison, still except in prison. for two who have died in prison. Still in prison. For, for what? For, for racism, for, white supremacy. For that what? was they the problem. Did absolutely nothing. So they did nothing to but trying this. to be a self respecting human being on earth. They weren't going to go by white supremacist rules. That's it. And when you do not abide by white supremacist rules, you're in trouble. Aren't you? And we just saw the, uh, the church bombing um, uh, in North Carolina. The 
child goes into the church, watches all these black people praying, ambushes How many them, did he kill? shoots them all, kills what six people. No, I thought it was nine or something. He he injured a lot, a lot more. He injured a lot more. A lot of folks. Now these are people praying. <laughs> Obviously, being black is not the problem. Being a racist is the problem. Being a white supremacist is the problem. And thank goodness, it's a testament to the human spirit that every person is not a white supremacist and a racist. Because we fight it. We can all fight it so that we don't end up being racist and white supremacists, thinking white is always right. It's not. Exactly. The human race is always right. I know, but um, boy, it's it's kind of scary when it's we look at the Republican scary. convention and they are, you know, really the they they they're dog whistling, make America white again. That's and what the, they want. And the irony is, <laughs> you know, you know really. and I would tell people a lot of times I would go to stores and I I'd see how people mistreat people who are not white, and I would just I just stand back and watch. As people come through the counter, and every time I sit at the, at the counter, it's, not, it's never, hello, ma'am, how are you? It's like, they just throw the stuff. How dare you not be white supremacist? How dare you love your culture and your people? How dare you? So you're the enemy. Right. But the problem is that we have gotten so comfortable. We've gotten so content. We act like, well, if we just ignore this fire in the basement, the house will survive. No, the whole thing is going to burn down. It's about to crash. It's about too, to boy. crash. Oh, God, this is this is real scary. Times. This is real scary. So you know the the entire country was founded upon so much white supremacy and racism that it has become the norm. Three hundred and fifty years of indigenous land theft and annihilation. Three hundred years of racial enslavement capitalism. There was no trade. It's enslavement capitalism. A hundred years of lynching. That went on the minute the 1865 and the 13th Amendment, not the Emancipation Proclamation. Abraham Lincoln enslaved black folks. But when the 13th Amendment ended enslavement capitalism, 100 years of lynchings began, 1865 to 1965, yeah. by the worst terrorist gangs this country has ever seen, the Ku Klux Klan and other white supremacist groups. And not only, they used to have picnics. Picnics. Send out postcards. That's right. Announcing picnics that uh, w you know come to the come to the lynching. Come and to the would, lynchings. We, and and then they would just, they would lynch people and then and and do all kinds of all terrible kinds of things, things to their bodies. And, and I tell people mutilate their bodies, castrate them. If uh, you were just, pregnant, they would lynch the pregnant women, slit their stomachs open with a machete, they let the baby fall out, and they said we can't even waste a bullet on that. And they that. say we're criminals. We're criminals. And I brought some of those pictures because uh, these were postcards. On Sunday, after church, they would gather with a basket lunch. They would go pick a nigger picnic to kill. And they would spend the whole day burning, That's where the word came lynching. From. That's where the word came from. I know. So I'm constantly telling people, please don't have a picnic. Go have an outing in the park, but don't go to a picnic. <laughs> I and know, these pictures were on the newspaper Monday morning. Everyone's smiling. There's, these are postcards that you would send to your family and friends saying, look how we are keeping the niggas under control. So none of this is new. This is a history that America does not want to acknowledge or reveal, like the Nazis never wanted to acknowledge the camp. The and it's not taught in the schools. And ironically, the miseducation that we experience in the schools starts from enslavement capitalism. Tell me about it. Even though black people are the progenitors of the human race, four million years before anybody else was on the planet, we were here. Four million years before there was the United States, we were here. Exactly. 12,000 years before there was mother, the United States, we invented civilization. We all came from the mother continent. We Come all on. came from the mother continent. And even the hu human genome exper experiment has proven there's only one human race. Exactly. So even if you don't want to acknowledge the work of the genius Sheikh Anta Diop, the African Senegalese scholar who invented radiocarbon dating and the potassium argon technique, the techniques you need to age or to date fossil finds and anthropological tools, even if you don't want to believe him, fine. Let's believe the human genome is brilliant. Yeah, and you know, I, I'll take this opportunity to, to encourage people to read Dorothy Roberts' book, Fatal Invention, Invention. how science, big, big business, 
how science, politics, and big business recreate race in the 21st century. The 21st century. And, and people say things like, well, you know, we don't know what the problem is. Everything's fine now. Well, that's not true. The reality is that racism is with us 24 hours a day, Amen. seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And because humans are three-dimensional, we are physical, psychological, and social. We have a physical reality, a psychological reality, and a social reality. So physical terrorism, enslavement capitalism, that ended in 1865. It was replaced by the prison industrial complex, but anyway, Do you know, it ended in 1865. That there are more, more prisoners incarcerated today than there were slaves? Yes, because that's the way race and white supremacy works. And that's the irony of it all. So even though enslavement capitalism ended, social terrorism against us in every area of society, economics, education, entertainment, family, labor, law, politics, religion, science, war, still ever, it never ended. And white supremacy, psychological terrorism that we are all going through never ended. So racism never ended, white supremacy never ended, but instead, instead of acknowledging the disease, the evils of racism and white supremacy, people are distracting us with conversations about race. It's not the problem. You know, Mark Twain, and by the way, I'd just like to inject uh, the Chinese uh, proverb, cure the sickness to save the patient. Thank you. And the sickness is racism. The sickness it's is racism. Curable it's curable. It's curable. And we can all survive this yes. if we focus on it. Yeah. Or if we acknowledge it. Acknowledge come it. Out, stop, come out of denial. Number please. one, get okay. out of denial. Yes. We have to acknowledge racism. Yes. Let's start talking about it. If we don't exactly. talk about it, we're yes. never going to fix it. No, so I, if you it. talk to me on the street, I'm probably going to be talking to you about racism white supremacy because I want it gone because I love the human race. I don't want my grandchildren going through this. Too. All kinds of people. All kind of people. Mm -hmm. And you know, b before racism, and I, I, I must quote Mark Twain here, <laughs> Mark Twain said, <laughs> racism is the white man's disease. And that's what we just finished saying he was, we should cure. Yes, he was right. very clear. Oh, yeah, he Not was, the white cool. man. Caucasians aren't the problem. The Caucasians is a term that was invented by a German anthropologist J.F. Blumenbach. Caucasians aren't the problem. White people aren't the problem. Black people want the problem. White supremacy. I, I wish is I the had that, that quote available from Einstein. He made a he made a terrific quote too about race, and I forget what it was. <laughs> I, I'll have to I'll have to look it up and well, you know, try and to memorize it. The <laughs> truth is is so the interesting thing about the truth is that no matter how much you try to cover it up, it always shines through. Mm -hmm. A little bit always shines mm -hmm. through. And even though we have been given a language to hate black people, the reality of black genius, black beauty, black wisdom shines through. So if you are practicing martial arts, <laughs> you know that if you achieve excellence, you get a black belt. <laughs> when you don't have any information and you're ignorant, you're wearing a white belt. Yeah, my son has four. Because. <laughs> Black is the color of excellence. If you want to get a really luxurious, glamorous event, it's going to be a black tie event. You're going to get a little black dress, put in a black limo, because black is the color of elegance. <laughs> when you really want to have a winning hand in cards, it's called blackjack. <laughs> People travel all around the world to kiss the black kava stone. We know that the best beer is dark beer. Best chocolate, dark chocolate. And I like my coffee dark. Dark. <laughs> and the, the greatest pleasure on earth is D light, not light. It's dark. So why do, why is it that judges wear black? Because black is the color of justice. They've even taken our symbol, the goddess my eye, and turned her into this crazy fool lady in justice, blind to justice. We know that you graduate in a black cap and gown. Why? Because black is the color of intelligence and wisdom. See, the truth is going to always be there somewhere. Our reality is to make sure that we dig for the truth. We have to step out the box of racism and white supremacy. Step out, of the box. step out the box of the concept, the misnomer of races. There are no races. There's just one human 
race. We are all members of that human yeah, race. I keep trying to get people to say ethnicity, nationality. Right. Phenotype, yeah. not race. Not race. It's not real. Yeah. And there are no masters mm, of the human not race. not a whole bunch of races, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's really interesting how we can call ourselves the most intelligent animal on earth and do the most insane things. Tell me, like, <laughs> what's going on today is insane. It's horrifying. There aren't even words to describe it. It's so it's, wicked. It's hard to. It's so wicked. And anyone who I, is not. I, I mean, I'm, I'm old. I mean, 77 years old, and I've been paying attention since 1968. Thank you. And I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like this. It's horrific. This is, woo. Through, this is amazing. So I, if people don't wake up and come together Thank you. And, 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 and hit the bricks, we're and in uh, we're we're in deep. We will be extinct. I can't say the word on on the air, but we're in deep. You we're know in what. deep. <laughs> we Ooh. are we are causing our own extinction because we refuse to simply love and respect and protect each other. It's too it simple. Love, respect, protect every member of your species. Yes. We are the only species that does not do yeah, that. We better hurry up and come together. Figure it out. And, uh, you know, if you're not supporting Black Lives Matter, I want to know why not. Uh, I've even had other black people say, well, that's divisive. How is it divisive <laughs> when <laughs> we're already divided? And black people are being murdered and killed. Mm. We're, the, we're the lowest on the totem mm. pole. We're, you know, we're, mm. we're, we're, we're the most oppressed, mm. the most abused, the most brutalized, the most incarcerated, most incarcerated. the most unemployed, Thank you. And, and you name it, you know, we suffer from it. And no one calls and that divisive. No, no one calls racism divisive. Exactly. No one calls white supremacy divisive. Right. We are brainwashed and, and, into this psychopathy. I, I, I think most people have noticed that the people that are being shot dead with impunity by police happen just mostly nine out of ten at least are black so that tells you that black lives don't matter and when we stand up and say they do matter you're gonna have a blank fit about it are you kidding me and that's how white supremacy works white is right it goes without better. saying yeah. that all life matters. Thank you. Why should we anyone need... have to say that? Well, yes. It's Nobody ridiculous. Nobody has to say life matters. People's lives matter. But this country has denigated and oppressed and brutalized and exploited black lives and, and killed with impunity black lives. And continue to do and so. And continues to do so. And, and I have to be worried about my son. My grandchildren walking down the street. And my kids and my feet. Yes. yes. It's ridiculous. And I'm sure by the time this program is over, someone else will have been shot. And the fact that everyone is not up in arms shows how sick we it's are out. as a human race. Yes, we are. We are sick. Because we have all been caught up in this narcissistic psychopathy called racism and white supremacy. Yes. It is psychopathic. It is sick. It is I, narcissistic. I, 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 I want to inject right here something, Kuti uh, Chagulia. Women, men too, but mostly women are taking care of the kids, and a lot of men are stepping to the plate too, so I shouldn't, I shouldn't discriminate. But um, when you take your kids out to play, stop pulling them away from dark-skinned kids. I... St <laughs> <laughs> Stop teaching them racism. Yes, that's right. Stop teaching it to that's them. That's right. And you know, I, I used to test it on, with my kids. Well, first of all, with my kids to teach them to be non, to help them grow up to be non-racist. Right. That's a trick in America. That's a trick. It's a really a trick. Especially when you're being abused and oppressed and exploited. To, I'd watch them and let, and let them play with whomever they chose to play with. Definitely. So I remember, I want to uh, do a flashback um, anecdote. I was standing in Yale New Haven Hospital, and it has a huge lobby. And uh, so I could stand at one end and pretty much see, watch my daughter no matter mm -hmm. where she went. Right. As long as I was standing, you know. So I watched her, I was watching her, and I saw her go over, and she was about two or three. No, she was two. And she was precocious. So. <laughs> and she, she found this, um, a couple of kids, and they happened to be Caucasian kids, and the the the, the, the women, uh, two women were, assuming they were the parents, were sitting there, chatting, and they mm -hmm. didn't notice Lelia at first, mm -hmm. 
And so she went over and started playing with the kids. My, my daughter is brown skinned. And she, um, she was playing with them while I'm watching them. And I, I, and I observed the two parents look up and see that their two little white kids were playing with my daughter. Mm. And all of a sudden, <laughs> white supremacy kicked in, didn't it? And they they, they grabbed the, both of the kids and put them on their lap, That's right. lap and, and let Leonia know that That's right. mm -mm, she was not welcome. And what message did she just teach those children? Well, she taught three kids. She taught the kids True. don't don't hang out, don't don't go near black That's folks right. or dark skinned right. folks. And she, and Leonia learned that she wasn't welcome. True. She, she wasn't welcome. True. So, yeah, it's, we have to be concerned about our, our actions, and then how yes. about our black women are the lowest on the totem pole in, economically. I did, there was a study recently that came out, and it classified the different three different three or four different groups, right? Whites, white men, and white women. White. It did, did it by gender as well as as, as ethnicity. national mm -hmm. ethnicity, mm -hmm. and so it had white people, um, Asians, Latinos, and blacks. Hmm. I don't have to tell you who had, and it and it gave average wealth. <laughs> of course, we know who's at the bottom of that. Okay, so the average wealth for everybody, including black men was in the plus column. Wow, the fact that you said plus. <laughs> I know what's coming next. <laughs> Guess what black women's wealth is in this country? This, Our wealth. This is scary. Minus a dollar. And it's ironic because now, our, our, now doesn't that tell our spiritual something? and cultural wealth, there's no numbers that can Okay, but I got another it. figure to go with that. Mm. Guess who ha has the highest level of it? education in this country. Black women. Black women. Yes. And guess who the immigrant population is with the highest level of education? Black women? Uh-uh. Right. Africans. Oh. Oh, yes, that's true. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, see, we've been taught so many mm -hmm. lies that mm -hmm. we have no idea what the truth is anymore. Mm -hmm. we don't. And the sad part is, we don't care to know. We're just comfortable with the lies, especially if I get the benefit especially from the if lies. I can keep feeling like I'm oh my gosh. just because I'm white. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you how many times I walked in a store <laughs> and I watch white people rob the store blind because they're watching me. Because the stores are watching there you me. Go. <laughs> it's, I just laugh. And it got to the point where I would walk in the store and walk straight up to the security and take them by the arm. Let's go. I'm going to this all first, and I just go and have them escort me through the whole store. I just got sick of them following me as if I was going to steal everything under the sun while I'm watching white people steal all kinds of things because they know if some black people in the store, we're the not being watched. security is gone. That's, that security is gone. So, you know, everyone hurts. No one really wins. Even the one percenters who think they're getting over, you're going to be extinct too. <laughs> If we kill each other, even the one percenters with mm -hmm. your yachts and, you know, <laughs> Richard Pryor said, uh, I have no place to ride my horse here. I need to kill as many people as possible. <laughs> yeah, that was one of his jokes. Well, you're not going to be able to ride your horse here and your boats. That's great, but we're all going to be dead. If we don't learn to respect, protect, and love each other as one human race. Ain't that the truth? We're extinct. Yeah, we are. We, we will climate be change extinct. is really, really... Uh, the floods in China, the, the heat in India and Iraq and everywhere, the... the Ooh, and I don't even want to know how hot it is in Africa. Oh, my gosh. And when I'm, are we going to unite just to do that? And you know what's that? so cold about uh, the continent of Africa is going to, and India and the Middle East, they're going to suffer, they're going to suffer more than any other true. Uh, folks on the planet from, from uh, climate change. In other words, the planet heating up. Mm -hmm. Okay? And yet they are the, the ones who con contribute the least. To the problem. To the problem. How ironic is that? See, this is the hypocrisy, the double standard, mm -hmm. the wicked evil of mm -hmm. this narcissistic psychopathy, yeah. racism, and white supremacy. It's very nasty. And each one of us is responsible to eliminate it, or we're all collaborators in our own extinction. We're right. either part of the problem or part of the solution. 
Right. Now, you take Haiti, for example, and you know I've been advocating for Haiti for a long time because it, it's, it's so outrageous what this country is doing to Haiti and now also to Puerto Rico. Uh, that's a whole other program. A whole other program. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just briefly on Haiti, you can tell why Haiti is touted as the poorest country in the mm. Western Hemisphere forever because they insist on keeping it poor, poor. because the people are black and they're not all light-skinned black. They're dark-skinned blacks predominantly. And that, you, you can't tell me that racism totally. is not the, 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 the number one factor of course. in the continued exploitation and oppression and neo-colonial crap. Right. That's 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 made it out to Haitians. You know, Haiti took on the Spanish Armada, kicked their butts. Took on the British Army, kicked their butts. Took, took on, on the Napoleon. United States, the, kicked took on everybody. Napoleon, Napoleon that was supposed all to have the baddest, baddest armada on, on the planet. On, thank you. And these enslaved Africans kicked their butts. So they ganged and up. And they on ganged them. up on them and forced Haiti to this day. Haiti is paying reparations. Now, America is quick to tell you and I, we don't deserve reparations. Well, well, reparations are divisive. We can't do that. But they are forcing Haiti to pay No, no, millions. no, no. They, 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 they already did that. They forced them to pay reparations for the loss of the sugar plantations and the money that they right. were making. So what happened was the, the I think it was, um, it was finally paid in 1945. I don't know. I, I, I mean, the dates are amazing. escaping me. But um, when Aristide came to power, mm -hmm. he figured out how much that they paid mm -hmm. back to France, right? And he uh, uh, had it calculated in um, uh, in dollars, right? And today's money, right? right? And uh, you know, minus inflation and all that. And he and that's one of the reasons he became a uh, 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 persona non gratis because mm -hmm. he. Uh, demanded it, the, the, the amount today is 21 billion plus and he demanded restitution that's right not reparate restitution, restitution of the, the reparations they paid right and that's when they they said let's get rid of this guy get rid of this guy <laughs> Get him out of here. And uh, we're clean out of time. Oh, my Baby, gosh. <laughs> it went so fast. Baby Akuji Chagolia, oh, King Warrior Love. Thank you so much. Sister Love, thank you so much thank for so joining much. us thank on you. Freedom thank is you. a Constant thank Struggle. You. Thank Jackie Perez for doing a terrific job on the boards. And thank you for tuning in to Freedom is a Constant Struggle. We'll be back on August 4th, Black August 4th. Mm -hmm. Whew. All power to the people. Power to the Release people. Release all political prisoners. Yes. Down with this rotten ass system. Be a human being of the human race.